Akron Athletics presents Zips Weekly with John Gross. Sponsored by Bryant Heating and Cooling and Hilton Hotels in Akron and Fairlawn. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of Zips Weekly with head basketball coach John Gross. Well, right now, the Zips are 21-8 and eight overall, 13-3 and three in the Mid-American Conference. That's good for first place in the MAC. as we get set for the final two weeks of the regular season, beginning Tuesday night at home against Eastern Michigan, then up to Kalamazoo, Michigan. That will be a Friday game at 6 o'clock against the Broncos. And then it's on to Cleveland for the Mid-American Conference Tournament beginning on Thursday, March 14th. Got a lot to talk about today, Coach, beginning maybe Tuesday night because a win Tuesday – makes all the Zip fans smile because we're regular season champions, right? Yeah, no, we've got obviously a great opportunity. Yeah. We're playing at home. But you got to play well. Yes. Uh, we know that. And it's interesting, a lot of this was when you play teams in terms of how well they're playing. Right. You know, take Northern Illinois, for example. You know, they won at Toledo this past week with eight guys. Yes. You know, leaving their second and third, uh, second and third leading scores back at home due to injury. Okay. Then they play at Toledo, they win. Then they're at Akron, the two teams at the top of the league. It obviously gave us everything they did. Uh, that we could handle um, on, on the other night. So, you know, I, I got to give them a lot of credit um, because obviously they're not a team right now that has the ability to earn their way to Cleveland. Right. Um, they're out of it mathematically, so to speak, but man, have they kept playing. And then you got some other teams in our league that are playing their best basketball as well, regardless of record. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we're playing up to our standards. Yeah. We've, you know, been up and down a little bit defensively, right. and we need to be better on that end of the floor. Um, but give our guys credit. They found the way to win games and put themselves in a good position yeah. heading into the last week of the regular season. Yeah, we're going to take a look at highlights. But, Coach, uh, one quick comment about senior night. I know it was very emotional as we said goodbye to five really special players. Yeah, no question. Um, it was a special night to be able to recognize those guys and for them to have their families yeah. and their friends, a lot of their friends there, um, was awesome. Um, just a special group, not only from the perspective of winning and championships and all that, but who they are as people, who they've been as students and continue to be as students and people. Yeah. Uh, just exceptional, just a really special group. They sure were, and it's uh, not finished yet. They got a long way to go. Right now, let's go back down to Athens, Tuesday night. The Zips taking on one of the better teams in the Mid-American Conference, the Ohio University Bobcats. And, Coach, they're playing as well as anybody right they now. They really are. They're on a roll right now, uh, playing as good as anyone in the league. Uh, got great chemistry and connectivity, as you can tell, from coaching them live, watching them, uh, coaching against them live, and then watching them you know, on film. I thought we got off to a great start defensively in the first half. We really battled and then uh, took a 10-point lead, Joe, with 11 and change. Yeah. And then just had too many mental mistakes at both ends of the floor. Bad decision making on offense in terms of shot selection. Some key turnovers. Uh, and then give them credit. They stepped up and made some plays. They got the crowd in the game. Uh, and it got rolling. And uh, next thing you know, obviously, we're battling from behind there late. Um, had a chance with a couple opportunities that we didn't take advantage of on some possessions offensively. And uh, just didn't go our way. Give them credit. I mean, they're playing as well as anyone in the league right now. You can see right now the Bobcats are up 23 to 18. You call a timeout, Coach. I think Clayton hits a long three. You call timeout just to change the momentum a little bit. Yeah, in the first half. Yeah. Um, obviously, I knew you're going to lose the timeout if you don't use yeah. it. And uh, I knew it was going to go to the media. And it gave our guys a chance to get a blow a little bit, especially our heavy minute guys. Um, but, yeah, no, we – you had to finish the half. We finished the half strong, I thought, and got off to a great start um, in the second half yeah. and built that 10-point lead and did a lot of good things. You see Nate Johnson getting a deflection there. Of course, it was Nate's first game back in about five weeks, and I thought he really uh, played well uh, in Athens. And then you see Reek uh, go Steph Curry mode here and bury a 40-footer right before the half. Uh, to put us up six. So, you know, we were in good position, like I said, till about 10 minutes, 10, 11 minutes to go. And then uh, they went on a 10 nothing run to tie it up at 50 all. Um, and it was ball game at that point. You know, they were, they were in it. It was uh, going to be nip and tuck all the way to the end. 
So I, I thought that three or four minute stretch there, Joe, from the 11 minute mark second half to about the eight minute mark was the difference in the game. Exactly. You know, to open up that second half, uh, we tried to extend the lead. I think uh, Sammy had a tip in for two. Greg Tribble hits a wide open three, and we're playing pretty well early in the second yeah, half. Yeah, no question. I thought we did a lot of really good things for about 30 minutes, and here you see it tied at 50 all. Yeah. We answer back there with the three to take a three-point lead. They do as well to tie it back up, and then it was, you know, going to be possession basketball the rest of the way. And uh, we, we put ourselves in that position a little bit with some mental errors, certainly not to take anything away from Ohio, who's playing, as you noted earlier, as well as anyone in our league right now. Um, they got a lot of momentum, so playing well. But uh, we, we did some things mentally that we got to get cleaned up as we uh, work to continue to play our best basketball here down the stretch. Yeah, Ali, Ali, as you see, uh, final moments of that game. Ali picked up his fourth foul at 12.32, but... Boy, late in the game, he kind of put the zips on his own back. I mean, he hit some big shots against Yeah, we, we need him to be aggressive yeah. like that at the beginning of games. Uh, I encouraged him to do that in the next game against Northern, which we'll talk about here shortly. Yeah. Um, and I thought he was a little bit better with that, yeah. uh, especially with Northern playing mostly zone. Ali's very good at operating in the high post, mm -hmm. making plays for us. Yes. And he's got to be aggressive. When we're at our best, Ali's aggressive. Zips will lose that one down in Aston, 74 to 67. We're going to take a break. Come back and look at highlights from Saturday's big win over Northern Illinois right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. Okay, welcome back to Zips Weekly with head coach John Gross. Northern Illinois came to town on Saturday, and coach, I made the comment on the radio side, they came in with absolutely nothing to lose. It was out like they were playing a summer game. They were out there having fun and a dangerous team right now. Yeah, they are, because it's exactly what you said, and Coit in particular was absolutely terrific. It was as good an individual performance against us as any guards had all year. And uh, they were loose and free, and yeah. you know they mathematically are out of the equation to go to Cleveland. Uh, they're not playing for seed, they're not playing for a championship, and they're just out there rolling having with, with eight guys, yeah. you know, having fun, hooping, and playing. They played with great physicality, great effort. Thought they were really loose. Their shot making, especially with Coit, was elite, and uh, it ended up being a, a heck of a game. You know, defensively, we weren't able to impact them at the level that we needed to. Yeah. But we made some shots and made some yeah. plays, in particular in the second half. You know, I want to highlight Prather came in and gave us a big a boost. Shot. He really did. Played six or seven minutes, had eight points, no turnovers, made two threes. I thought he cut well, uh, did what he was supposed to do, and gave us a big, big boost, a lot like he did at Buffalo. Yeah. Right now, let's go back to uh, Saturday night at the JAR. Senior night, introducing the seniors prior to the game. As the Huskies come to town, one more home game left. That'll be Tuesday night against Eastern. But, Coach, it was tough to say goodbye to those guys, but they came out and played well. They did. And, you know, obviously the offensive glass, you saw there Ali get an offensive rebound. We had 10 offensive rebounds, Joe, at halftime. And it was what was allowing us to survive because uh, our offense was not very good. Uh, we struggled on that end of the floor against the zone. Then the second half, we were really good against it. Um, we needed to be a little bit better. Ball needed to move a little more. I thought the ball was a little sticky. And um, we ended up getting it going a little bit more in the second half. But what kept us alive was the offensive backboard. It really, you see, there's a 95 where Greg gets the offensive rebound, kicks it out to Prather. Great pass there by Nate to Ali behind the zone. Uh, here we get a Nate Johnson wide open three in the corner on an extra pass. Great execution out of timeout. Freeman gets a layup. Uh, great pass by Greg there. So we did some good things, but the offensive glass is what kept us in the game in the first half. Uh, even though we were trailing, we were right there. 
and a lot of it was due to the glass. Second half, we were much better offensively. Uh, defense was better, built a 13-point lead with five to go, yep. and then needed to close a little bit better, missed some free throws, and uh, got a little sloppy late. I thought the early minutes of that second half, we really got back playing Akron basketball. He got a quick steal and score by Caleb Thornton, another three-pointer by Sammy Hunter, and then they made another run at us. It was, they it did. Was, it was tough that second yeah, half. Yeah, like I said, we built it up to 13, and again, a little bit due to our, some of our mental mistakes and our sense of urgency, details, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that, that assisted them in coming back to get it closer. You see Greg get on a loose ball, big play, you know, putting his body in plays. It's what winners do. Greg's a winner. Yeah, they um, mentioned that they kept coming back at us. Yeah, in they fact, just kept it was, coming. It was 55-53 yeah. with 9.35 left, so it was a heck of a game at it, that point. It really was. Um, it really was. They kept battling. Coit's shot making was just elite. It really was. And then their ability to get on the glass, their physicality. I thought their zone was good, in particular in the first half. It was really impactful. Second half, we were much better against it. Brian Prather hit a big three-pointer, as you mentioned, Coach. Uh, that gave us that 10-point lead at 63-53, to 53, and then it got a little tight again. It did, for sure. Towards the end, again, that 13-point lead dissipated. Um, to our, our fault, to some extent, we need to be a little bit sharper. But again, give them credit for just continuing to keep playing. Ricky Freeman, of course, uh, playing before mostly all of East Cleveland was there for him. Yeah, the no, we joked night. after the game when we looked down, we were doing radio, Joe, and we said, I think half of Cleveland and half of Puerto Rico was at the game, <laughs> you know, watching, which is great. He deserves that. He's had such a special career. And we want to continue to keep this thing going as long as we can. And obviously, he's a huge part of what we do. And not only, in my opinion, the no-brainer, most valuable player in the league, yes. but also a guy that uh, is one of the best players in the country. Now, Zips win it by a final score of 80-73, to 73, and 10 Zips scored. He played a lot of people, and all of them got in the score. We did, now. trying to punch buttons. Yeah. You know, some guys played – you know, just okay based on their standards. Some guys played a little bit higher level than others, and we're going to need everybody. Every game's different. Yes. I always tell them success is going to look different for different guys on different nights. We have that type of team. You know, obviously, our consistent guys, our foundation, you know, with Greg and Ali and yes. Reek needs to be there. But the other guys in terms of production, when you look at a stat sheet, we have a really good team, so it will vary some. Yep. We're going to take a break, come back and announce our Players of the Week right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. It's always a highlight each week to announce our Players of the Week. This week, two seniors, Enrique Freeman and Ali Ali. Coach, we can give you the numbers. Everybody knows how well they play. I thought it would be kind of unique to let the fans know the first time you saw both these guys, Enrique Freeman, Ali Ali, and what your impressions were then and what they are yeah, now. Yeah, no, and unique stories, right? So Ali is a guy that didn't have any Division I scholarship offers until we offered him, yeah. um, which is hard to believe. And it was right before his senior year, and you saw a guy 6'8", long, smart, skilled, um, and I thought we thought he had a chance to be a heck of a player. And uh, obviously, you know, here we are. He was second team all league during the NCAA tournament run. You know, I think he's a, in my opinion, a first team all league player this year, uh, one of the better players in our league in the country as a yep. six foot eight guard. So it's amazing his development and how much better he's gotten over this, you know, five-year window. Yes. And then you look at Freeman, his story, you know, he's first time you see him as a, you know, in a walk-on tryout, student body walk-on tryout, to now becoming what I think, you know, should be the player of the year in the league, in my opinion. And, 
you know, Mac tournament MVP two years ago, defensive player of the year, all defensive team, first team all league last year. It's just an amazing story and a tribute, I think, to how hard those guys work and the commitment they make to their craft um, and the staff. Give yeah. the staff a lot of credit. We've got great assistant coaches and support staff that do just a terrific job with our with our guys. The numbers for Enrique Freeman this week, 13 points, 11 rebounds against Ohio, had one block. Then he comes back against Northern Illinois, 22 points, 11 rebounds, 11 for 12 from the free throw line, three block shots. And one thing I noticed down in Athens, they tried to play him man for man. That didn't work. Then they had to go back and maybe try and Yeah, they some trapped help. him, obviously, with a, yeah. you know, a scheme where they trap from the backside. And, you know, we um, – you know, needed to execute a little bit better against it, uh, both him and, uh, you know, staff continuing to help him and his teammates. Um, but, yeah, they, they doubled him. He's seen every double oh, team yeah. known to mankind at this point. I mean, it's, he's seen them all. Exactly. Know? So that's been the biggest difference in terms of his evolution. You know, the last three years, including this year, he's been a very good player. But last year, the number one guy on the scouting report was Castaneda. You know, the previous year it was Castaneda a little bit and him. Yes. Well, now he's the number one target on every scouting report. So every game plan that a team puts together starts with him and how you're going to approach him defensively. And so that's been a great uh, you know, kind of a maturation process for him as, a, as he's evolved as a player to learn how to deal with all that, to be in that primary target. And he's done a great job. He's continued to improve uh, by leaps and bounds with it all year. Exactly. The numbers on Ali for the week, uh, 16 points, 5 rebounds against Ohio, 17 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists against Northern Illinois. Congratulations to those two young men. We're going to take a break, come back with our Sky Report of next week's opponents right after this. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes the dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes E.H. Roberts Heating and Cooling. Find them at ehroberts.com. Okay, welcome back to Zips Weekly. It's now time for our uh, weekly Skyder Reports, brought to you as always by the Hilton Fairlawn Hotel over at 3180 West Market Street in Akron. And coach, we come down to the final week of the regular season. Now we're, we're in pretty good shape. There's a lot of teams out there really battling to get up to Cleveland and see what seed they're going to be. Yeah, no question. Everyone's playing for something, right? Yes. For the most part, um, you got the teams trying to figure out seeding, trying to figure out how to get in. You know, obviously we have an opportunity to compete for a championship this week. And, um, and you know, there's not a lot of a lot of teams out of the 360-plus that can say that yes. in the last week of the regular season in March. So give our guys credit. They put themselves in that position. Uh, now it's, you know, it's up to us to take advantage of it. You know, Eastern will be a, a stern uh, test. You know, we can't rely on what happened in game one to think that that's an automatic in game two. We'd be very foolish uh, to do that. They're a completely different team. Uh, they're playing, ironically, just like Northern, almost all zone. Yeah. First time we played them, they hadn't played a lick of zone all year. And so it's resulted in a three games out of five winning streak here. And the last one, of course, that they lost uh, was against Miami. And Acup, the leading scorer in the league, it kind of fluctuates between him, Marcus Hill, and Coit, we yeah. just saw, didn't play. That's 22 a night. So, I, you know, I don't know if he'll play on Tuesday or not. Uh, we can't control that. What I do know is that we got to be ready to attack the zone. Uh, we've got to be really good there. If Acuff plays, he is a one-man wrecking crew like Coit, and he has really good shooters around them, and they have great size. And the one thing that's unique about their zone here lately that they've been playing that Stan's committed to 
they'll have four guys out there that are six foot seven or bigger in the At zone. Least, yeah. And then Acuff's not a small guard. He's six foot four right. as their point guard. So that zone is long and big, reminiscent a little bit of the Rob Murphy Eastern Michigan teams yes. that played so much of that Syracuse 2 3 zone, right, that we saw every yep. year. So that's going to be a test for us. We've got to make sure that we're ready to go and um, have great preparation leading into it because uh, they're completely different. They're playing really, really well. And it'll be interesting to see if Acuff goes uh, or yeah. not. They've won two out of their last three games. They have an excellent player, young man from up in the Cleveland area, Jalen Billingsley from Lutheran East. He had 13 and 10 against Miami on Saturday. He's a really good player, too. He is. He's skilled, transfer from Georgetown. Yeah. Um, a Cleveland kid, you know, can shoot threes in a one-game setting. He's capable and then uh, very physical, can drive it. Uh, has a skill set for a six foot eight, you know, 225 plus pound guy. You know, can play both inside and out. So that poses challenges for you. He's not just exclusively one or the other. Um, and then they've got been having great three point shooting um, from a couple of their wings. And when they, you know, when Jihad and their wings shoot threes and make threes, they're really dangerous. Um, that's usually when they win, when they yep. make 40% plus from three. Um, when they don't, they, they struggle some, yeah. you know, because people can key on a cuff. So it'll, it'll be a good challenge for us. Uh, Got to control what we can control, our preparation, make sure that we're, we're ready to go, take it one possession at a time. Which brings us to the final regular season game. That'll be up at Kalamazoo, Michigan on Friday night, 6 o'clock tip-off as we take on the Broncos of Western Michigan. Coach, they're one of those teams that are log jammed with two other teams, both all three are eight and eight, so this is going to be a huge game for yeah, Western. Yeah, no, both, both teams are playing for something when we yeah. get to that point. Um, it's on the road. They've got great size, as you know. Javante Brown, the big fella, the transfer from Texas A&M and UConn is, yeah. man, is he a big, big boy. Um, so we got to deal with him. Titus Wright, huge. You know, they got good guard play with B. Artis White, Seth Hubbard. And then Hannah's been terrific lately, um, about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, wing. I liked him last year when he was a freshman for them and he's been really really good so we'll have to play well there'll be you know a lot at stake it's good to play those type of games this yes. time of year because that's what happens when you get to Cleveland you know so we have to be ready to go when you play them it starts with transition defense they're so fast you know Dwayne is a guy that that um, coached at Michigan State for years under Tom Izzo and uh, they're going to push the tempo on makes and misses and really make you get back they're very physical. They're going to screen you. They're going to get on the glass. Uh, they're going to execute. Um, you know, they've been played man-to-man uh, -man primarily. Uh, so that'll be a different game than yeah. Tuesday's Eastern game, which will be mostly zone. Um, so two different types of games. You've got to be ready to adjust and be ready to go. But right now, obviously, our main focus yeah. is on making sure we're ready for Eastern Michigan. Yeah, take a look at the, uh, the numbers and some of the stats for Western Michigan. They had 19 offensive rebounds in their last game. Yeah. They they really go to the glass. That's hard. what they do, right? Yeah. I mean, that's it's interesting. I, he smiled because I was an assistant at Ohio State when he was an assistant at Michigan State, and I said, DJ, uh, Dwayne Stevens, DJ. I said, your team looks a little looks familiar. Looks like it did when you and I were sitting yeah. one or two seats over, and he laughed. But they do. They they try to play that way, like Michigan State, which is obviously a great system and style of play. Um, again, rebounding is huge. They're big. Uh, I'm not surprised by that number. Um, but you got to get back in transition. You got to rebound. You can spend all your time covering what they run on offense in the half court, but if you don't get back and you don't rebound the ball, yeah. and you, in other words, start and finish the possessions the right way, what they're running on offense isn't going to matter. They're going to beat you in the yeah. possession game by getting easy ones. Exactly, Coach. One more uh, plug for the Mid American Conference tournament, which begins Thursday, March 14th, up in Cleveland. I know you'd love to see. Five, six, seven thousand zip fans up there. That'd Always like a home court advantage. Yeah, out there be for great. The zips. Yeah, these guys have deserved. They yeah. earned it like, by the way they played. They, as I've always said, they've represented the university in a first class way, both on and off the court. And then obviously their winning and success as a group over five years speaks for itself. But no, it's a great time. It's yes. an unbelievable tournament in an unbelievable venue in a great city. And uh, hopefully we see a lot of Zips Nation up there uh, on that Thursday and hopefully Friday and Saturday, right? But you got to play well 
and yeah. take it one game at a time. Yeah, if you're a Zip fan, get your tickets right now for the Mid-American Conference Tournament. For Red Coach John Gross, I'm Joe Dunn. Thanks for watching. Back next week with more Zips Weekly. And as always, go Zips. Thanks for watching. Zips Weekly with John Gross. Sponsored by Bryant Heaty and Cooling. And the Hilton Hotels in Akron and Fairlawn. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.